Welcome to the Parent Portal Overview. Thank you for taking time out of your day to learn more about this important free tool available to Chicago Public School parents. Let's begin our time together by outlining this video's scope and sequence. As educators, we know that quality instruction begins with objectives. Here are the objectives for this lesson. We will begin with a general overview. At the end of this lesson, you will understand the purpose of Parent Portal at the administrative, school, and parent level. You will also be able to see a parent's view. You will view a demo of what the parent can see and do on the portal. This will enable you to make informed recommendations regarding the portal and troubleshoot with parents when necessary. We will then explore the parent sign-up process. By the end of this lesson, you will know the essential items needed for successful parent portal registration. Lastly, we will explore your role as a parent portal administrator, including responsibilities and expectations. Now that we know our objectives, let's begin. Parent Portal is a free, web-based tool that allows parents to securely view their child's grades and attendance online. Parents can receive email or text notifications when their child is absent or when his or her grades drop or rise below a certain threshold. Parents are able to set the threshold and the notification preferences from within the portal. Think of the Parent Portal as a window into the classroom. It allows parents to quickly and easily stay engaged in the day-to-day -day classroom activities of their student. Let's take a peek at what parents see when they log into the portal. This is the Parent Portal landing page. The main navigation panel contains a welcome to the parents as well as a reminder that contact information on the portal does not update their official records on Impact SIM. You'll notice that the landing page also includes various district-wide alerts. These alerts are set by the Impact Gradebook team and apply to the district at large. This being the case, currently there is no opportunity to customize them by school. Nonetheless, these alerts provide parents with important information throughout the year including report card pickup and testing windows. Let's focus our attention to the left-hand panel of the screen. Parents can select the student they wish to view by selecting the desired student in the drop-down provided. I'm going to choose Ethan. Let's now view the assignments page by clicking the Assignments link on the left-hand panel. You'll notice the screen automatically defaults to display upcoming assignments. The assignments on this page represent those with a due date of today or any date in the future. Depending on how fast the teacher is with grading, some of these assignments may already have a score listed. Parents have other options available like viewing recent assignments and assignments by period. As you can see, there is a great deal that parents can view at the assignment level. Now let's take a look at grades. On the grades page, parents can view all the courses the student has taken this school year, the corresponding teacher, and grades for each cycle. I can see Ethan is struggling a bit in reading. If I want to get further information, I can click on the grade letter, in this case, the C. When I click on the grade letter, I am able to view additional information. First, I am presented with the current average. This tells me that right now, Ethan is getting a 74% in the class. From this view, I can also see assignments broken down by category. I can see that for AR Comprehension Goal, an AR test average, no grades have been entered yet.
For differentiated instruction and homework, however, grades have been entered. For each assignment, I can see the date it was assigned, the due date, the grade, and any note from the teacher. The grades page is a great way for parents to keep on top of students' current grades and drill down to see assignment detail if needed. Now let's take a look at attendance. By clicking the attendance link, I am brought to the attendance page. Like the note explains at the top of the screen, this page will display dates that have either absent or tardy codes for student attendance. This is a quick way for parents to see a log of days that their student was either late or not in school. Notice this page provides the date, the class period, and the code description. For elementary schools, the class period will typically display HRM for homeroom. At the high school level, it will list the exact class period. It looks like Ethan has missed nine days of school this year so far. As you can see, this screen is incredibly beneficial for parents to verify that attendance in the system is accurate and complete. Now, let's take a look at triggers. This is one of parents' favorite features on the portal. It allows parents to set up automatic triggers to be sent to their email or phone when a student's grade drops below a certain threshold. Focus your attention to the trigger options. Parents can set up an automatic trigger when a student gets below a certain average. They can also set up a trigger to alert them when a grade goes above a certain average. The Watch Attendance feature will alert parents when a student is absent or tardy to a given period. Any of these can be modified or deselected. Parents can also set how they receive their alert. They can choose to have triggers sent by email, by text message, or both. By checking both boxes, a notification will be sent to both email and cell phone. Email alerts will be sent to the email that parents use to register for the portal, not necessarily the email at Impact SIM if those emails differ. Parents can change their cell phone number here. Remember, however, that this will not update the data in SIM. Parents love this trigger feature. It allows them to receive alerts on grades and attendance on a regular basis without having to log onto the portal itself. Let's move on and view the calendar. Parent portal administrators can post school-wide events on this calendar if they choose. All parents have to do is click on the date to view any events. This can be yet another way to connect with parents. Let's explore the Manage Students page. This screen displays all the parent students that are linked on the portal. It also displays the student's ID, grade level, school, how many parents are attached to the student, and their portal status. This is where parents can delete or add students. Parents simply click the Remove button to delete a specific student linkage. To add a student to the portal account, the parent clicks the Add Students button. The process of what is needed to add a student will be covered later on in this video. As you can see, it is very easy to manage student accounts from within the portal. Lastly, let's take a look at My Settings. This screen allows the parent to change their contact information from within the portal. Parents can reset their password here. Parents can also change the language displayed on the portal to Spanish from this screen. If your school has a high Spanish-speaking population, it is important to explain this feature to your parents earlier rather than later so they can fully reap the benefits of this tool in their native language. Parents can also change their phone number and their mailing address. Remember, this data does not sync with the official school records on Impact SIM, so it is important to explain to parents that when their contact information changes, they must reach out to the school to update their official record. The email address field dictates where the triggers are sent. The email indicated as primary will receive the triggers. Parents can remove an email or add an email here.
After seeing what Parent Portal can do, I am sure you will agree that it is a powerful tool for parent-student accountability and achievement awareness. Now let's talk about the steps to take to get parents registered for this free tool. There are three basic steps to the sign-up process. First, parents must create an account. Second, parents must link a student to their account. Third, the Parent Portal Administrator at that student's school must approve the pending account. All three steps must be completed in order for parents to view their students' attendance and grades on the portal. Here is how parents sign up. Open a web browser and go to cps.edu. Then click on the Students link. Scroll down to the Parent Portal panel. Let's click on the link to create an account. This is the landing page where all parents log into the portal. Notice on the bottom of the screen, there is a link to view the Parent Portal Orientation Guide. The Impact Team created this for you to assist parents in the sign-up process. Let's imagine we are a brand new parent to CPS signing up for the portal for the very first time. We would select the Click Here to Sign Up link. On this screen, parents create their own username and password. These are the credentials they use every time they sign into the portal. They can also choose their default language. Parents must then enter their contact information. If they have an email address, parents can enter it here. Before creating an account, the parent must agree to the terms of use. Once the information on this page is entered in its entirety, the parent clicks Sign Up. Step 1 is now complete. Now parents must complete step two of the process, linking a student to their account. Once an account has been created for the first time, it will automatically direct the parent to their parent portal landing page. We've seen this before. Let's go ahead and click Manage Students. To add a student linkage, a parent simply clicks the Add Students button. In order to create a successful student linkage, the parent must provide the following information. Student ID, student name, student address, the student's school, the student's date of birth, and the student's PIN. I'm going to enter this information now. The PIN is a unique identifier and acts as an added measure of security to protect students' privacy. Student PINs are located in Gradebook under Reports in the Student PIN Report. It is the administrator's or the TechCo's responsibility to distribute PINs in a secure manner to all parents. Once all the information has been entered, parents click Submit. 
This completes step two and places the parent application in pending status. The last step, step three, is crucial in finishing the registration and is precisely where you, the administrator, come into the process. We just left off with the parent account in pending status, but I want to back up a bit and answer some questions you may be having. If you recall, the student PIN is a crucial part of the parent registration process. I want to show you where the student PINs are located in Gradebook. I'm going to log into Gradebook, select Grade Speed, and then click on Reports. Scroll down to the bottom of the screen to locate the student PIN report. The report will automatically default to your school. Select View Report. This report provides you with the name of every student at your school, their corresponding student ID, and student PIN. If a parent reaches out to you asking for their student's PIN, this is where you would go to look. Let's click the return key. You will notice you can also export this file to create an internal mail merge document or printout. As you can imagine, you want to use this option with extreme caution. The data on this report will allow anyone to sign up for Parent Portal and claim a student as their own, so you do not want to leave this report laying around or in the wrong hands. Our team has also provided a quick way to easily distribute pins to the parents in the form of a pin letter. Click the return button once more. We're back in our reports. Locate the letters and labels report. Let's leave the drop-down fields as is for now and click Print Letters. Once the report is done generating, the result is a page with letters addressed to all the parents explaining the parent portal, what they can do on it, and at the bottom, the PIN number. If you scroll down, all the parents are included on this page, so it is understandably very long. If you right-click and select Print, this page will reformat, putting each letter on its own 8.5 by 11 page to mail home to parents. Here is the print option. Let's exit out of this screen. Let's say a parent is coming into the office to meet with you and you know they are not on the parent portal yet. You might want to use this face-to-face -face opportunity to promote the benefits of the portal and get them signed up. In this case, you would want to print out the PIN letter, but only for one specific student. You can do this easily by selecting the desired student in the drop-down, and then clicking Print Letters. You would then right-click as before and select Print. It's that easy. Gradebook also provides the option of formatting and creating mailing labels for you from this screen. You would select Print Labels to do this. Now that we know about the Student PIN Report and the Letters and Labels Report, let's return to our pending application. Click the Return button to exit the report. Click Admin Home in your left-hand panel. On your GradeSpeed landing page, you will see the Switch User link on the left. Clicking this will switch you over to the Parent Portal Administrator page. I'm going to click it now. Now click Parent Connection. If you are assigned to multiple schools, it will ask you to select your school here. If you are only assigned to one school, you will automatically be taken into the portal. Here is your Parent Portal landing page. You will notice the administrator layout looks very similar to the parent view, except with very different links and options. 
If you remember, we created a parent account that is sitting in pending status, waiting to be approved by an administrator. Let's go in now and approve that application. Click the pending link in the left-hand panel. You'll notice we have a few pending accounts on this page. These applications represent parents wanting to view their students' grades online, just waiting to get into the portal. It is your responsibility to check pending accounts at least once a week, if not more, to approve those accounts. We don't want frustrated parents waiting weeks and months to be able to view their student grades and attendance online. Let's find the parent application we created. I'm going to click on it now. To view the details, select Details. The page that appears has some very important information. The first column, titled From Application, lists the student information provided by the parent when they signed up for Parent Portal. The second column, titled From Database, lists the information for the student in Impact SIM. The student ID, address, date of birth, and student PIN should match. This page also shows the parent information, both entered from the portal registration and the information in Impact SIM. If all the information matches, the screen will display as so. If any of the information does not match, that field will be highlighted red and require further validation. Since everything matches on this page, I'm going to approve the application. To approve an application, simply click Approve. Now the parent is successfully registered for Parent Portal. As you can imagine, it is not always this easy. Sometimes parents register for the portal without knowing their student's PIN or they enter the wrong student ID. Let's look at some examples. I'm going to select another application now. This application has one error. Notice everything matches except the student PIN, which is highlighted in red. It looks like the parents entered the wrong PIN here. The correct PIN is listed to the right. In this scenario, you would want to suspend the application to contact the parent and provide the correct PIN number. To suspend an application, click Suspend at the bottom of the screen. Suspend status acts as my internal to-do list alerting me that as an administrator, I must contact these parents to provide correct information to get them on the portal. You can access all of your suspended applications in the left-hand panel. Let's look at another pending application. For this application, the parent entered the wrong student ID. When this happens, everything is highlighted red because without a correct ID, there is nothing to match from within the SIM database. You'll notice that the Approve button is not available. Since nothing matches in this application, the best I can do is delete it. The Deny option should be used sparingly because it prevents the user from creating another account with that same email address. Deny is typically used in custody issues. Since that does not apply here, I would select Delete. The system will then ask me why I'm deleting an account. Whatever I type in the field that appears will be sent to the parent in an email message, so be sure to be specific about why you are deleting the application. That is how you manage pending applications. Again, the expectation is that you are checking and approving the pending accounts at least once a week. Let's all do our part to get our parents efficiently transitioned into using this powerful tool. That concludes our video. You now have a working knowledge of what parents can see and do on the portal, how they sign up, and your responsibilities in the registration process. Thank you for joining me. And on behalf of CPS Impact Team, thank you for all the fine work you do for our students.